Hey folks, my name is Brad, and if you happen to be new to my videos and channel, I hike way up into the mountains of Vermont with my metal detector, searching for treasures lost by the pioneers that lived up here hundreds of years ago. And today, I have made my way to an old stone foundation from a home that was built around 1820 and abandoned shortly thereafter. Now, as you can probably tell, we had a light dusting of snow last night. It is supposed to warm up a bit later today, so it probably won't stick around, but while it's here, I'm going to use it to my advantage and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, this is one of the first of my videos that you've seen. I publish one of these every single Friday. So if you like what you see here today, consider hitting that subscribe button or just come on back next week. I'm gonna get that metal detector out and see what we can find here. Right up next to this tree, I have an 82 and it sounds really nice. Quite a bit of chopping through roots here. Oh, you. That was a lot of work for a spoon handle. <laughs> we do have a maker's mark there. Well, as you probably noticed, I really struggled <laughs> to recover that spoon handle. It was embedded right down in those tree roots. But that's just one of the challenges of metal detecting out here in the forest, up in the mountains. Most places, there aren't any roots to contend with, but when they're right next to a tree like that, sometimes it takes a while. I was hoping for a big old gold coin, but we ended up with what appears to be a pewter spoon handle uh, with a maker's mark. Uh, and not too long ago, I found an identical spoon handle with the exact same maker's mark, so I know exactly who made it. I uh, have fresh research in my mind. Uh, it was by a man named John Yates. And the mark is actually pretty peculiar because you can see the H-N-Y-A-T-E, and there's an S at the end, all in these individual squares. Upon first glance, it seems like a whole bunch of individual marks, but it's just John Yates all written out, but separated. I don't know this for sure, but I have to assume that's because it was punched into the spoon handle it wasn't cast in so they would have had to individually punch two letters at a time end of the 1700s pretty cool Ch a challenge to get out of the roots but i'm glad that i persisted and we recovered it i'm going to recheck the hole see if the rest of it's down there and then decide if i should get the rest of it out or not <laughs> i will if it's there let's see what else we can find it's a pretty nice 78 Whoa, what in the world is that? Wow. If this is a buckle, it is like one I have never found or even seen before. When I first saw it in the bottom of the hole, I thought maybe it was going to be an escutcheon for furniture, maybe behind a drawer pull or even a keyhole. But this bar in the center certainly makes me believe that it's a buckle. And based on how thin it is and delicate, uh, I have to guess that it's a sash buckle. So the actual strap that went through here would have been a soft cloth or ribbon as opposed to a leather belt. Beautiful, more than likely worn by a lady. You can see that there's quite a bit of silver plate floral adornments on here. Absolutely beautiful sash buckle. I have found quite a few sash buckles, uh, but none of them look anything like this. It's so small. These unfortunately very rarely have patent dates or maker's marks on them, so we more than likely won't be able to know exactly how old it is, but we can make a very good guess based on when the folks lived here. I'd say around 1860, 1880, somewhere around there. Absolutely wonderful find. So when metal detecting in the forest, 
I'm constantly winding between trees and fallen logs and rocks. And it's very easy, I'm sure I'm guilty of doing it hundreds of times a day, to walk through the same paths that you've walked before. And while that's fine sometimes, it's nice to get over fresh ground to make the most of my time. And that's where the snow comes in. Earlier I had mentioned I was going to use it to my advantage, and it makes it very easy to see where I've already been. Through this area, you can see one line of my footprints, but over here, fresh snow, untouched here, untouched here, which tells me I have a lot of area where never been searched before. It's a very simple thing, but it helps me make the most of my time out here. Granted, I'll have cold hands and wet knees, but it's worth it. And it's already melting. It's only halfway through the day. You can probably see it coming off the trees. I don't think it'll be totally gone by the end of the day, but by tomorrow for sure. All right, I'm gonna hit all these spots I haven't hit yet. Let's see what we can find. Well, maybe you can see right here, there is a massive boulder. And I always try to metal detect around big landmarks like this, because this would have obviously been here hundreds of years ago. And kids would have loved to play on this back then and today. Uh, so you never know if maybe they drop something. And I got a beautiful target right here. It's a 79. Let's see what it is. I think it was dropped by a kid. That's like a big square nut. Old one too. Your guess is as good as mine what that went to. Not exactly a treasure, but you never know. This might be iron, but sometimes it's reading a 72. you don't recognize that, let me tell you about it and tell you why I am so excited to have found this today. So it was not a very good target on the metal detector. It was just squeaking through. I suspected it might be iron and it is, but what this is, is the hammer to a flintlock gun. You can see here, this is where it would have screwed to the musket. And these jaws right here would have held a piece of flint. This is a flintlock hammer. Unbelievable. I have found numerous hammers from percussion cap muskets, which are quite a bit more modern, but this is as old as it gets in terms of muskets here in New England. Now, the folks that lived here, they were farmers. This was a home and this musket more than likely would have been used for hunting, right? But there's always a chance they were a veteran. And this is left over from a war, potentially civil war, but this is an old gun part. Could also be from the Revolutionary War. Unbelievable. It is very, very rusty, packed with dirt, and I'm not gonna touch it out here. I'm gonna very carefully go through it at home and get it slowly cleaned up as good as I can. What an unbelievable find. You know, looking at it in its current state, it is just a ball of rust, barely recognizable, but what an incredible piece of history. Flint lock musket part. Man, unbelievable. 67. Bullet. No. Wow. Really? 
Well, when I first laid eyes on this, I thought for sure it was going to be another shell casing from a rifle because I have been finding those all day. Although people did live here hundreds of years ago, people have also been using this land for hunting, deer hunting, since then. Uh, so there's shell casings everywhere. But it is not a shell casing, as you probably saw. This is a pen cap. Or a mechanical pencil, I suppose. Uh, the mechanical pencils back in the 1800s, very early 1900s, I don't think they actually called them that. I think they were called lead holders, and they didn't actually have the button on the back that made the lead come out. It was just, as the name implies, a lead holder. Uh, but I do believe that this is a pen cap because the inside is threaded. It would have been a fountain pen. And I would have to guess this was from uh, the very late 1800s. I have found a couple uh, lead holders from the end of the 1800s, but only one pen ever. And it was solid sterling silver with a golden nib. That was from the 1920s, I believe. Uh, this, judging on the age of the place and when the people were here, I have to guess this towards the end of the 1800s. Unfortunately, it's just the cap. But what this tells me is that the people that lived here, at least one of them was literate. They could write, which back then was not all that common, especially for folks that used to live up here way in the mountains. What a cool find and what a story it can tell. Oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody recognizes this artifact, especially if you've seen any of my videos within the last two or three months. And my surprise of finding it is not that I found one, it's that I found another one, another pocket knife. It seems I find one or more of these almost every week. This one though appears to be on the older side. I don't think it's out of the question to assume it belonged to the inhabitants of the stone foundation home and not dropped by a hunter within the last hundred years. We have wooden scales on the outside here, which given how old it is held up pretty well, but judging by the size and how deteriorated the double blades are here, you can see there's two grooves. I would say it's almost certainly from the 1800s. Pocket knives back in the 1800s would have been used for absolutely everything, especially at a place like this, an old homestead way up in the mountains. They were likely operating as a small farm, feeding themselves, would have used this every day, multiple times a day. Fortunately, they lost this one. The blades look like they were collapsed. It was still together. Lost accidentally would be my guess. Interesting little fact about these is the wood scales on here were likely preserved because underneath them is a sheet of brass, it contains copper, which has antimicrobial properties, preserving the wood. Pretty interesting. Let's see if we can find something else or maybe another pocket knife today. 57. Oh, nice. Wow. Wow, so like pocket knives and buttons and buckles, thimbles, like the one I just found, very common find for old home sites, right? They were constantly repairing their clothes. They didn't have nylon yet or polyester for their thread. Clothes constantly needing repair. But I can honestly say I have never, after the dozens and dozens of thimbles I have found, found one like this. Not only is it gold plated, but there's also writing down here. I've never found a thimble with writing before. I'm going to get out my toothbrush and a spray bottle and see if we can discover what this says. All right, well, I have been staring at this thing for the last 10 minutes or so. <laughs> Can't figure out what it says, but I can make out some of the letters. It looks like G, A, P, and then I think another P and then back here, 
I just can't make it out. I assume that's a name, but one that I'm going to have to do some research on when I get home because I have zero cell service <laughs> out in the boonies once again. But this is a remarkable find for me. It's gonna give me the ability to date it, ballpark when this company was in business, gold plated with a name on it. Can't ask for a better thimble except a silver thimble, which I have still never found. <laughs> dozens and dozens, I'd say 50 thimbles, but this one, although crushed, might be one of the nicest ones I found. Really, really cool. Important part of life back then, that's for sure. All right, folks. Well, unfortunately, I need to call it a day a bit early, uh, but it's cold out and the low temperatures are doing a number on my batteries, both my metal detector batteries as well as my camera batteries. I went through, I think, two GoPro batteries. This one is flashing low battery at me, so I'm gonna call it a day. I used the snow to my advantage as best I could, but it just doesn't seem like there's a ton of stuff in the ground here. But the things that I did find, one thing in particular I am super excited about. I've got it all laid out on this rock. Let's take a look. All right, I think pretty much everything on this stone was in the video. I didn't find any buttons whatsoever, very little trash, and no buckles either. We have the giant square iron nut, a couple pieces of mystery brass, very thick though. We have our pocket knife, our John Yates spoon, a pen cap or perhaps a lead holder cap, our beautiful thimble with some writing on there, which I cannot wait to do some research on, a beautiful sash buckle, one clock gear, and by far my favorite find today, this month, a flint lock hammer complete both jaws there absolutely incredible just goes to show you have to investigate those big pieces of iron because you just never know what it might be all right folks well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed today's video and hopefully i will see you here next friday for another new adventure somewhere hopefully somewhere warmer looking for treasure see you then mm -hmm.